Hello, Stephanie. Hi, Tia. How are you doing today? I'm good. I am so happy and excited to interview you, chat with you, and really have people that listen to this podcast learn from you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, You know, I admire all the work you're doing and all the talks on happiness and watching your podcast. So I'm very honored to be on here today and just have a conversation with you. Thank you. You have been a leader of people for quite a long time in different markets, in different types of organizations and properties. And the world of work it has changed so much and is changing so rapidly. Mm-hmm. In your opinion, what is most challenging about being a leader right now? Yeah. Um, wow. There's quite a few things, but I'd say one of the ones that stick out to me is not the work environment's changing, but our external environment is changing so much. Everything going on in the world, our worlds have been this past decade turned upside down. COVID really kind of changed it all for us. And we haven't come right side up yet and maybe never will. And what you're seeing is that people are battling all the things that are going out, happening outside of work. um, And they bring that to work. The most important thing with your team is understanding them and building relationships. And part of what everyone is dealing with now is everything that's going outside, you know, wellness, we have an epidemic of loneliness out there. Now Mm -hmm. we have, I mean, climate change is impacting us faster than we can ever imagine. Um, People are dealing with an aging society. We just have so many external factors that are weighing on us as people um, each day. And as people, we bring those things into the workplace. So as leaders um, and as organizations, I think addressing that, understanding that and focusing on wellness and understanding what people's challenges are and all the things that we're facing externally Mm -hmm. impact us in the workplace, right? So if we can Mm -hmm. bring some light to that, if we can understand that and show, you know, understanding and empathy, when people come to you, you have your one-on-ones with your team members. Um, That is your chance to have a conversation with them. And more often than not, you know, a lot of times we're going to use that as as a checklist on our goals and what we need to get done. But if we're not listening to them and understanding everything that's happening in their their world, you know, we aren't really giving them the opportunity to bring them their best selves to work, their whole selves, their whole selves to work. And that's what is important to people and also to organizations. Right. So um, I think once upon a time, it was like, we just always have to focus on the results, on the KPIs, on the OKRs, on our budgets. That's what's most important. And we leave out that human equation sometimes. And then our teammates get burnt out because they're trying to reach these goals, but they're not finding balance, you know, in what's happening outside of the workplace. And so I think once we have an understanding of that, that might mean we need to build flex work in, you know, we need Mm -hmm. to embrace some of that hybrid or remote work model. We need to focus on fitness and wellness in the workplace, you know, just getting out and getting sunlight and getting energy, um, having positive conversations, conversations and growth and leadership and training doesn't always have to be focused on the actual work, because if we grow as people, personal development, personal development, we grow as um, team members and leaders. You know, I recently took a um, training within my organization. It was great. We were focusing a lot more on personal development um, as one of our like overarching goals for the year. But what was missing a little bit was where are the tools? You know, people are seeking ways to do this. And I think we actively need to give them tools and encouragement to develop as people. Um, and not just as a, whatever it may be, as a food and beverage manager or as a salesperson, how right. do you develop as a person? And right. I think that's going to be our greatest challenge. Organizations that can do that well, leaders who do that well, have people who are engaged and who want to stay mm-hmm. and um, and want to grow with the company. So right. because they're, because they're well, you had such a a valuable list of external factors that people are facing. 
I also want to add, it's, it's a big one, social media, technology, AI, our phones, like, oh, yeah. you know, even, all the distractions, all the good exactly. things that come out of it. Yeah. yeah. And our, and kids and teenagers, you know, um, you talked about loneliness. There's also yeah. epidemics of depression, anxiety, yeah. you yeah. know? So I think it's, yeah, really, really valuable what you shared of like, it's natural to focus on driving results. And that's what has worked. That's what majority of leaders, mm -hmm. executives focused on, mm -hmm. but we can't just focus on that anymore. We just can't focus on that. Yeah. Um, there's too many, there's too many obstacles. And yeah, like you said, like even just climate change of what's happening around, you know, this is on everyone's mind every day, every day. And, um, you know, I think to ignore it also just shows that you're not progressive. You know, we want to be progressive you're out of touch. You're out of touch, you know, and it's not, you know, the biggest thing I keep thinking again, um, what I've always taken pride in. And I think, you know, what makes me a happy leader is the relationships I build. Yes. Um, and it's not about being transactional. You know, I think once upon a time, it was like, you get a paycheck, you have a job. Um, that's not what people are seeking anymore. They're seeking to have a relationship, to have a connection, a real connection and make an impact. Cause again, all these external things are happening. You yeah. want to know that what you're doing is meaningful. You know, it's not just a checklist. It's not just right. a paycheck. And so I think if you understand that drive and that, um, really that's for most people, that is the driving factor. You're going to get better results. The results will come when you address those things. Yes. Yeah. Well, Stephanie, this is why you and I were so well working together. Yeah. One of the steps in be happy leader is prioritize relationships over to do lists, which is yeah. exactly what you're talking about. And we should mm -hmm. say that many people have not been trained how to be this type of leader. Okay. For many people, this doesn't come naturally or they didn't, they haven't had leaders that are like this. And that is, if you're one of those people listening, thinking, I don't know if I do this well, that's okay. This isn't something that is, you you know, you have it or you don't. You can absolutely learn, learn it, how to grow yeah. your empathy Mm -hmm. have more meaningful conversations, be more relatable, be more in Listen touch more. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, also all the different socioeconomic issues facing people, the mm -hmm. different, you know, racial issues, like just everything there's, there's so much going on that, um, yeah, I think that's a really, really, I didn't actually think you were going to say this, but, and nobody has said this, but it's a really important yeah. part that, that needs to be top okay. of mind. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what I think about a lot because I see it, you know, and yeah. we're, you know, we are as leaders, I'm not meant to be your therapist, but I'm there to help you grow as a person. Right. right. And so being cognizant and aware of that, and also finding tools that I can use in the workplace to help address that and help, you know, um, alleviate some of that. I just think there's a lot weighing on us as individuals as leaders as teammates we all want to do really well yeah. but um it's it's a shift it's a shift you know mm -hmm. for me I worked through the entire pandemic and the role that I used to but everything changed you know right and so some people didn't um work they got out of the rhythm they came back um places they used to be at or were completely different or new people or new challenges and again mm -hmm. Um, it's all the things. So yeah, yes. really trying to find some balance and make sense of that for the people that you lead and the people that you work with each and every day um, is going to make the difference in the results that you get. Yes. Yes. So I know from direct experience that people who worked with you and especially mm -hmm. for you really loved you as their boss, <laughs> not loved you, you know, but like yeah. loved you as their boss. Yeah. So how did you learn to be this type of boss that people really liked working for mm -hmm. working with? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of that came from working from other good leaders and mm -hmm. some not so great bosses, you know, mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest things that I learned and held on to was leaders that taught me to be engaged, that stretched me, that um, gave me the opportunity to, to um, 
to grow and to fail were the ones that I really got the most from, you mm -hmm. know, um, bringing a positive energy into work made a difference to me. You know, I've had bosses that have been very autocratic and will, um, micromanage our error and that wasn't what I needed to grow autonomy. so people autonomy. that gave you autonomy yeah. like you autonomy. said to succeed and fail to succeed succeed and fail and so you know as I began to lead people it was understanding again back to that relationship what does that person need right so again I think the key thing is always really trying to understand because for some people it is being a little bit of a micromanager holding their hand but holding them accountable and getting them to a place where they feel strong enough, building trust, being transparent, sharing a vision um, with everyone on the team at all levels. You know, I think um, not just on your team, but also with everyone in the organization. You know, mm -hmm. it was always important for me to make sure that the relationships that I built transponded be beyond our office wall, beyond my the team, your college, division, the vision, you know, all the way up. It was what, what does that person bring to the table, having conversations and making sure that I always supported my team, no matter what, you know, yes. how do yes. we, you had their back, had their back. Um, and then also I have the back of the people outside of those walls of, you know, the sales office, it's right. your peers, your peers. colleagues colleagues, this isn't working great. How do we improve the process, you know, and then also creating an environment of continual learning. Um, and so I think those key things really um, have made me a leader that people still want to come to me and trust me. And even if it's not what I want to hear, they know they can have that conversation with me, right. difficult and crucial conversations. I'm also willing to have those conversations. Um, so there's a level of respect, trust, autonomy. And I got those from great leaders, one being you, but who also um, inspired me to be that type of leader, you know? So um, leading a lot by example. And then those things that didn't work so well, as far as um, not having that autonomy, not being felt like I was treated like an equal or lack of transparency, you know, a lot of times that leads for miscommunication and stuff. So I, I try to remove those things out of the equation and it's, it's not always it, easy, but also asking for continual feedback. You know, we give a lot of feedback, but I ask for a lot of feedback too. Ask for feedback from your team. From my team, from my team, you know, um, I think we do formal 360s at times we do whatever, but those periods where you have one-on-ones or you're doing midpoint checks or quarterly checks or whatever. It's also, what am I doing that is working for you? You know, what can I do more of to help you grow? Um, what don't you like? You know, I'll just say, right. is this not working? It's not for working for you. And for you. yeah, you know, um, cause we all can learn and grow, you know, we all have that opportunity to, um, change and modify things. And sometimes we get in our mojo and we think one thing works again for everyone and it's never a one size fits all. So again, it's really just kind of trying to understand and be agile. Be right. agile. Yeah. Right. Um, it is, it is incredible and challenging mm -hmm. being a leader of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I always said like driving the results. Okay. That's the, you know, it's all yeah. these personalities and experiences and, yeah. you know, and, um, and then you have your boss, your stakeholders, mm -hmm. the needs of the organization, yeah. the peers the in your case, customers, et cetera, yeah. thinking about yourself, mm -hmm. what do you do in order to be happy while working? Not all the time, because nobody can be happy mm -hmm. all the time, but you talked about positive energy and engagement, sharing a vision, many different things. Yeah. But what do you believe kind of reflecting on your own life and how you work that leaders need to do to be more happier than not while they're working? Yeah. Um, I think one of the things is to, to always celebrate wins, you know, to 
it's very easy to focus on all the challenges we have and yes. all the deadlines and all the, the everything, <laughs> the pressures, you know, so yeah, as stress, stress, um, as big or as little as it may seem, I think celebrating what you've accomplished, also what your team has accomplished and making sure that those moments are taken on a regular basis. You know, um, every single contract that comes in, every single lead, every single person that, you know, you talk to, we, we, we had a great day because we talked to three new clients, you know, just making sure that you, I keep that top of mind, but I also share that, that energy. It helps me, um, yeah. remembering, you know, the why, like my, I love clients and relationships and events. And so I always take time to savor, like I've been a part of that. You know, I think that reflection is very important, um, on why are you doing this? What, what's the enjoyment that you get from the work that you do? Um, and then taking that time kind of outside to learn or to grow or to get that energy and refuel yourself, right? Refuel so yourself when you're not working, when you're not working makes you happier when you are working. You know, I think just even, I can even say just in the last like three weeks, you know, I, I love to travel. I went on a trip and it reinvigorated me and I came back and I started like, it's getting dark at night, but I need to find a different way to wor work out versus walking, you know? And so I started taking a couple more classes, you know, and then also signing up for um, a personal development class. I love cooking, you know, so just focusing on those things that make you well as a person. Mm -hmm. I come into work with a little bit more pep in my step. Mm -hmm. You know, my team is like, oh, you seem very refreshed, you know, and those are the things that matter, mm -hmm. like taking care of yourself outside of the workplace is just as important and gives us um, yields better results. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things that, you know, keep me happy as a leader. I love it. I want to ask you one thing that you said at the beginning, um, yeah. celebrate wins small and big. And I know you do this with your team. Uh, it sounds like you also celebrate your own wins. Mm -hmm. It might not be your boss that's celebrating you every day. They have a million, you know, you're only one of their yeah. reports, but do you actually have an internal voice that's a cheerleader for yourself? I do. You said start with you. Yeah. yeah, no, I definitely do. And I definitely, you know, I share those moments. Sometimes it's with my family, with my loved ones, um, mm -hmm. with myself or, you know, give myself a pat on back. We did. I did a really great job. We met all those, you know, OKRs. I was able to, you know, disseminate this information to my team, some challenging stuff on change management. And, you know, they all embraced it. And do something from, you know, myself and, but that's hard. I think being a cheerleader for yourself is the hardest thing. It's easy to do for everyone else. I think just like being a parent, just like being like that great friend, it's easy to do it for everyone else. And it's really hard to do for yourself. And I found there's times that I haven't done that for myself and it, it takes away, you know, if you're, if you're if you just have the critic, yeah, you're the critic, you know, have you finished this? Have you finished that? And so it is important to me. And a lot of times too, I'll do this when my boss asks me, you know, what about this? What about that? I'm like, well, also we've done this, that, and that, you know? And so I think mm, making, that's a good one is telling your boss all the good things. Good things. Cause again, sharing think, the good things, sharing the good things and making sure that you are always, again, like it's easy to be a champion for your team or maybe not always easy, but this is something that we work on actively, but being a champion for yourself, you know, right. um, we have annual reviews and so many times we focus just on that, but like every time there's a one-on-one, -on -one, there's a catch up. It's like, yeah, we've done this, but guess what I've been working on. You may not have seen that. Yeah. You might not have the revenue results to match, but yep. we are putting on all this work and this is what's going to yield. Yes. Or yeah, I know we talked about that five months ago, but guess what? That client that I talked to five months ago is coming back today and is booking a hundred thousand dollar piece of business. So making sure that I also am sharing those wins with the people that need to hear it, you that know. Hear it. And when you're sharing that out loud, you're also you are also hearing it. Yeah. You know, like you are a witness to it. Um yeah. and I wanted to add one tool that I actually 
didn't have while I was working in the hotel industry, but mm-hmm. has been transformative for me as an entrepreneur and especially as a parent is the this tool of self-compassion mm. of speaking to myself the way I would a good friend or a colleague or a peer using mindfulness a lot more of just getting present and also the tool of remembering that all humans are the same um mm. common humanity right of like yeah. no you're not the only one only hotel you're only entrepreneur only parent whatever it is that yeah self compassion like i said i wish i had that a long time oh, ago i've only yeah. been in the last few years but um anyway that's been that's been really good i want to add to your you you offered so many tools okay we have time for one more question you worked for big organizations mm-hmm. and small organizations when you think about large companies large organizations where there's a lot of people what do you think if if you could speak to you know the executives of these big global companies right the c suite people what do you think they need to be thinking about to really increase morale and motivation and well-being yeah listen 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 to your employees and listen. action it right so you know the people in your employees and they are there in the trenches. They're there with the customers. They're getting that immediate feedback. And I think when you get into these multi-leveled matrix organizations, very often there are ideas that are coming from people that are not making it up there or they are making up there, but they dismiss them or they're not, you know, there's not a forum for them to really listen and then action it. And when you don't do that, they don't feel like they're part of the process. People want to be part of the process. They want to feel like they're heard. And that's what empowers and motivates them. You know, um, one time I was at an orientation for a new job and someone in an outlet, one of the food and beverage outlets had an idea. And it was like, that's a great idea. And the sales and marketing leader is like, we're going to action that. Not five months from now, we're going to do that next month. Like now we like, yeah. that's going to make it better. We're going to, yeah. Yeah. Or it might not make it better, but it's okay. Like sometimes we are so adverse to change or to actioning things and not allowing things to fail sometimes. Right. Mm-hmm. So working in a small organization and working in um, a startup environment for, it was a short period of time, but what it taught me a lot about being agile and taking risk, right? So, you know, I was tasked at times with coming up with a million different ideas and I'd be like, I'm not sure about any of these or we haven't beta tested it or I don't know, you know, I haven't thought all the way through the process and it would be like, go. And some of them took off and it was amazing, right? But if we didn't allow ourselves to do that, if we had waited a year long, we wouldn't have brought this product to the market, right? Um, and then there was also things I was like, oh, I'm not sure if that's that great. I'm not hundred, you know, all these things. It was still like, go, 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 go. And it was go quickly. It was not spend five months in resource and energy of people. It was, let's get this going in two months, see what happens. And it wasn't a great success, but from that, we learned a lot. We learned why it didn't work in the market. We learned that, you know, and so there's so much learning that comes from, failures. It's not a bad word, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, if you think about when you hear leaders at organizations like Netflix or different, where they're like, we're constantly failing or Google, it's like fail, 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 fail. fail. And that was a hard thing for me too. Cause I remember when it was like, Oh, this, this event and this product I brought to market did not work. My inclination wasn't to say that, right. It was like based on blah, 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 you know, dancing around it. And my CEO said, Stephanie, that's not what happened. And I think it's important for you to share that with the rest of the team and the rest of the organization, because it's important to know that it was, it didn't work. And I still support you, even though we failed Yeah, because you grow from that and you learn from that. And that's the cycle. And that was such an important lesson I took from working from like a very small agile company and that growth that we don't do enough of. 
in these larger and the bigger yeah the listen action yeah you're making me think like there almost needs to be another word and it could be out there maybe i'll find it that it it means keep trying yeah. right and some it's not necessarily fail it's yeah. it's actually that you're you're trying which you're has trying. such a different different connotation right like, exactly like a vocal like oh my god we're trying all these right. things versus yeah, yeah this is like exactly failing. and yeah yeah. And, yeah sometimes you know i think you've also taught me that reframe it you know it's not like oh my gosh i'm so busy all the time and you know sometimes that's I am very booked and I am, you know, everything I am it's all, all these things. I am well, a it's all these abundance things. in my calendar. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it is just that little word that, okay. you know, reframing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was kind of a very much an aha moment for me. And I gained so much respect from that. And also like helped me to say, Hey, don't be so afraid, you know, don't be so afraid. Actually, somebody really close to me always used to say, what's the worst thing that could happen? doesn't work out and you try it again that was you and you would always be like Stephanie really put it on a list and it's never as scary as it seems it's like just do it yeah you know it's a great again. question what's the worst thing because worst thing. yeah it seems like this big behemoth and then when you actually walk through it you're like oh right. no like I'm not yeah. gonna no. die yeah. you know it, yeah yeah it's amazing especially in large organizations it gets so like we just get so bogged down in like the process well that has to be approved by you know, 50 different layers. And it's like, does it, you know, does it? yeah, does, just you because. know, does it just because yeah. that's the way we've always done it. Um, yes. yeah. yeah. So just getting stuck out of those mentalities and yeah, no. Yeah. And the, the listen piece actually, um, I think it was last month I interviewed Jen Fisher, who was the chief well-being officer at Deloitte. And she, that was her number one piece of advice as well. She said, listen, 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 listen more, listen louder, you yeah. know, constantly. Listen in so. the right forums, in the right environments. You know, we have, every, I think every organization does some type of engagement survey. But it can't anyway. be more than once a year. It's got, yeah. It be more than once a year. And it's not a piece of paper. It's no. ongoing forums. It's, you know, it's think tanks. It's all those different things. Focus that, groups. Focus yeah. groups. It's, you know, um, really allowing people to be heard and not on a piece of paper once a year in a continual basis. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Stephanie, thank you so much yeah. for coming on the Arrive at Happy show. And um, I hope to see you in person soon. Very soon. Thank you so much, Tia.